Welcome to Penn State IST331 Team 5 Summary of our User Interface Design Project. The team consisted of Jason Hines, Jonathan Sarner, Dan Bertolino, David Kemp, and Emmanuel Pervalesco. For our project, we created a user interface model of a touchscreen kiosk for a museum. Our design is for the James A. Michener Art Museum in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Our primary goal was to keep the interface simple to use and have functionality that would present different parts of the museum to visitors. When designing this interface, we tried to meet as many of Ben Schneiderman's eight golden rules of interface design, with special emphasis on striving for consistency, offering informative feedback, and permitting easy reversal of actions. This application evolved from a low fidelity prototype to a high fidelity prototype with usability testing throughout the design process. This allowed for an agile approach to change requests as well as design improvements. Here we see the main menu. It consists of eight top level selections. After initial user testing, images were added to the main menu buttons to improve speed and recognition. And it wasn't until the final design reiteration that the museum image was added to the main menu screen. The green color scheme we used is what this museum uses in their digital brand and can be rebranded for other museums. We added a basic help screen that shows the standard touchscreen gestures of operation. From the main menu screen, a user can select the category they are interested in. Here we see the exhibit section. A visitor can browse the current and future exhibits. By touching the image or text of the exhibit they want to know more about, the system will show detailed information about that exhibit. Visitors can also touch the Show on Map button to bring up the museum map, displaying the location of this exhibit. A request of the client was to add an interactive map, as the current kiosk doesn't have any map section at all. We added a touchscreen map. Visitors can touch a gallery and they are brought to the exhibit that is located in that gallery. In the Art History section of the kiosk, we created a consistent experience for navigating through some of the notable history of the museum, along with an option to request archives that are part of the museum history. With a single image on the left, text in the middle, and a menu bar on the right, you can see we follow the web page style format that capitalizes on what a user would already know and expect while navigating the interface. In an effort to provide a consistent experience, we use the same format throughout the entire history section. The Museum Archives section is useful for guests who are interested in obtaining information regarding a piece of art from the history of the museum. This section also provides a link to submit a form for an archive. It is located in the middle of the screen within the text. This section created some challenges that led to changes regarding how the form was completed. For example, the initial design did not include a keyboard screen and allowed the user to submit without confirmation. To provide a more conceptual model, we added a keyboard to the screen that led to a better understanding and feeling of control within the interface. We also added an additional screen that asked the user if they were ready to submit prior to completing the form submission. This was designed to prevent errors on form submission by giving the user a chance to validate that they are ready to submit. This use of error prevention also came up during the design phase for the museum shop section where we added confirmation screens when placing an order and when canceling orders. The museum shop section was designed for users to be able to purchase items from the gift shop and either pick them up that day or have them shipped to their home. This section follows a consistent format and as I mentioned before, we built some forgiveness into the section by adding confirmation screens that ensure users have the opportunity to confirm their choices prior to completing their tasks. For example, when a user purchases an item and adds it to their cart, they can then choose to place the order, which will prompt them to either please ship or take home. Choosing either option will lead to a confirmation prompt regarding their selection. You can then place the order, or you can choose to cancel the order. This leads to a prompt where you can continue or confirm cancellation. These screens were designed to prevent errors and give users the confidence they need when navigating the interface 
and making their selections. Museum visitors can find information about an upcoming event at the museum by touching the events button on the main menu screen. A list of museum events for the next 60 days will be shown. An event can be selected to see more details about it. Visitors can also touch the order tickets button to place an order for tickets for an event. On any screen, the back button in the lower left corner can be used to go to the previous screen. The view full calendar button in the upper right corner can also be used to return to a list of all upcoming events. Upcoming events can be filtered by selecting one of the event categories from the list on the right side of the screen. The upcoming events for only the specific category selected will be shown. The filtered events list remains on the screen so that the user always knows what events are currently being shown. Events on this screen can also be selected to see additional details on them. Touching the main menu button in the lower right corner from any screen will always return you to the main menu screen. Museum staff can change configuration settings for the kiosk by using the administration screens. To access these screens, a staff member would consecutively touch in the blank area of each corner on the main menu screen. A button was purposely not designed to, to use for entering the administration screens to provide for a higher level of security. A passcode is also required to enter the administration screens. The kiosk administration menu displays buttons that can be selected to enter the various administration screens. The exit button exits the kiosk administration and returns to the main menu. Another function of the kiosk is the learn section located in the bottom right hand corner. This tab allows both students and teachers to access relevant information regarding classes and teacher resources. Now that we are in the main learn tab, let's start with the calendar. The calendar will display the current month and any days highlighted in green have classes available. Clicking on the date will then bring the user to another page where they're able to click the class they're interested in, read additional details, and order tickets. The order tickets page should be standard to most users who make frequent online purchases. Once the user fills out the appropriate information, they will be able to view their confirmed order before clicking purchase. A confirmation screen will then appear telling them information about the class they have purchased. Returning to the main menu and jumping back into the learn screen, we will now take a look at the teacher resources page. From here, teachers can learn about all the programs the Michigan Museum has to offer. Clicking on any of these options, will provide the user with additional information about the program they selected, as well as the ability to request more information. Once the user has entered their contact information and clicks submit, they will receive a thank you message. From here, the user can navigate back to the main kiosk menu to continue exploring. In addition to adult users, we also wanted to include a section of the kiosk that focused on a younger audience. To achieve this, we included a section which is tailored to users between the ages of 5 and 12. This section can be accessed from the Kids button on the main menu. We designed the Kids button with colorful letters and childish fonts so its purpose would stand out visually. The button is placed at the bottom center of the main menu screen so that it is easily accessible by a shorter user. When selected, the Kids button takes the user to a separate, simplified menu for our younger audience. We extended the child theme throughout this section by using large buttons and bright colors. Options are provided with simple wording and graphical components to make them easy for a child to comprehend. We kept the options to a minimum so that the child would not be overwhelmed. The museum page provides simple information about the museum and its history that can be easily consumed by a child. The Art and Statues page provides simplified descriptions in order to interest the younger user in current exhibits they will see. A scroll bar is included on these informational pages to easily navigate through them. The 
final screen, Fun Stuff, includes two separate options. The Activity of the Week screen auto-plays a short video describing the, the participation activity being held in the kids' fun zone of the museum. A video was chosen for this purpose to limit the amount of reading the younger audience has to do. The Make Your Own Art screen gives the child a familiar paint program in which they can interact. As you can see, we've retained the back button in the lower left and the main menu button in the lower right on all screens of the kids section as to retain consistency throughout the kiosk. When designing computer systems that users interact with, it is important to adhere to principles of design and usability heuristics. The systems need to be simple, consistent, and task-oriented so users are able to quickly navigate the system for their specific needs. Factors such as user profiles, user goals, and expectations should be kept in mind. Prototyping and usability testing can be done in order to identify design flaws early on and correct them. By employing these standards and strategies throughout the design process, the development team can more easily build an optimal application which is ensured to provide great value to the end users. Our team worked well together. We did encounter some challenges with keeping the design simple while still providing the full functionality an end user would expect. However, these challenges were overcome by sticking to the golden rules of design, eliminating redundant information, and providing a clear path to end user goals. Consistent communication and standards were agreed upon early, and this led to a successful team project.